Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We are going to prepare the two bicuspids and the cuspid for porcelain laminates. The teeth have been stained or discolored by tetracycline and it's important for us to mask that purple staining on the cervical and so the preparation will have to be a little bit deeper in this area than non-stained teeth. You'll notice also that uh, we have an occlusion that will make us take care of some special considerations when we're preparing these teeth for porcelain laminates. There's a crossbite, and our preparation will go over the buccal cusp onto the occlusal surface, taking into consideration the occlusal surface. We will start by making a mark and following this up with a tracer cut on that buccal surface. Then the cervical will be removed to this pencil line. We have outlined with pencil where the finishing line will be on the occlusal surface, making sure that we have enough room for the lower cusps, also on the cuspid. We have enough reduction on that surface going over the lingual. A half millimeter tracer cut will be developed using half the diameter of this diamond. Oh, uh, yeah, just. Uh, okay. okay, now do you want me to just go directly to the cervical? Yeah, first the cervical. Yeah. I'm just going to make a mark right around the cervical. Just to show where the finish line is. Beautiful. The preparation thus far has been outlined with pencil. The preparation is tissue packed to allow us to bring the finishing line under the soft tissue. Tissue pack is removed, and you'll notice that we have much more of the tooth exposed to develop our cervical finishing line. My face getting in the way. Your face is not getting in the way. You're doing fine. Maybe you can lean over even even farther, but that's not gonna hurt. It's just sort of just coming directly from the side of you. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, tuck it in. The Mm -hmm. 
you can see the extent of the occlusal finish line. <laughs> now you can see the details of the preparation, how it's tucked into the interproximal, and how uh, the cervical goes under the soft tissue, and the details of the occlusal finishing line from the uh, Mirror shot, you can see the details of the occlusal and lingual finishing line also. Tissue pack is now removed, and a polyvinyl siloxine impression is taken of the prepared teeth. Be careful to inject in approximately and under the soft tissue. Heavy body material then is placed over the top of this and allowed to sit for 10 minutes. We examine the impression and we look at the clean, clear finishing line. The previous shade then is verified to make sure that is correct. You can see the details of the preparation on these stone dies. Notice the die spacer. This allows adequate thickness of cement to mask out the purple color of the teeth. If you look at this from the occlusal, you can see the details of the occlusal incisal finishing line. The laminates now have been returned and they have a smooth surface. The opposite side has been frosted with hydrofluoric acid. We'll try these carefully on the model. You notice how they do fit. And the blue does not show through. We check the contours in a proximal space. We now let's look at this from the occlusal to see how that comes over the incisal edge. And these are tried in the mouth. You notice the details of the preparation again. The indentation in approximately for good color. and the occlusal finishing line, both on the two bicuspids and the cuspid. And the interproximal spaces. Now the laminates are being tried in using a little bit of water. This would be the same as using the untinted resin. This is a good starting point. You notice the soft tissue prevents these from being seated completely. However, we will tissue pack to check our fit 
we're also looking at the occlusal to see if that fits well. It's important to realize that the, we can gain some space on these, so these, if any adjustment is to be made, it is made now at this point. We are using the universal and a little bit of gray to match the other laminates that have already been cemented. This combination is tried in the mouth to make sure it matches the same as the other teeth. This will not be cured, this is just a sample run. This then is brought down and checked to make sure the color is correct. If that does match, then we can go on to the curing procedure. And we find that the cuspid with the universal and gray and the bicuspids match well. The teeth are tissue packed to expose the finishing line for etching and cementation. Phosphoric acid and the silane primer are used to condition the etched porcelain. This is rinsed then carefully with water and then each individual porcelain laminate is dried. String pack is removed. Then soft matrix is placed in the inner proximal. And after etching for 60 seconds, the teeth will be rinsed. Kerr Bondite conditioning agent is added to the etched enamel and also to the etched porcelain. This is mixed in equal portions. It's being applied to the etched enamel. You have to be careful not to get light on this. The bonding agent is also applied to the laminates. The loaded laminate is placed in the mouth and gently pressed into place, making sure it seats. Then excess is removed. And once the excess is removed, then the laminate is cured. Both on the cervical, on the uh, incisal, and occlusal. This takes place on all three laminates. They now have been cured into place, and we have excess material that needs to be removed, a scalpel, and a fine diamond can be used to remove this excess resin. Also, we check the occlusal. Excess will have to be removed that has spread on the occlusal surface. Scalpel blade, carefully used under the soft tissue, can bring up most of the excess. Here it's being used to clean the occlusal surface and remove the excess. Okay. 
the occlusals are examined and the patient is allowed to mark them. Flash is taken care of along the cervical. Very fine diamond. The margins are carefully checked to make sure there's no excess resin or a porcelain overhang. A finishing strip is used in approximately to remove excess and to polish. Now we see the cemented laminates blending with the occlusal surface. A diamond polishing paste will be used to polish the surfaces that have been roughened with the finishing diamonds. Here we see the polished porcelain blending nicely with the soft tissue fitting harmoniously in with the other teeth. The tissue reaction on the teeth is very good. The patient is taking dilantin, so we have a little bit of gingival response to that. However, the margin is brought under the soft tissue quite a ways so that the, the graying doesn't show. And you can see also the laminates and the tissue response here on the side and uh, how it nicely hides the purpling. Now with good oral hygiene and some tender loving care on these porcelain laminates, they should last the patient for a good many years. Okay, I'd like to show you then the linguals of these restorations. You notice how nicely the margins are finished in so I can go from tooth to laminate without even feeling this. This has been polished and ground with a diamond, fine diamond, show for rubber wheels, and then diamond polishing paste. So a uh, very, very good finishing line here. Okay. Now on the cuspid and the bicuspid on the other side of the arch here, you can again see how nicely these are finished in, blended in, ground in and polished so that the patient has uh, good excursions on these teeth and not undue force. You'll notice that uh, we have duplicated the natural contours of the, of the existing uh, natural teeth. These are not bulky, not over contoured. By reducing the enamel, we can then restore this natural kind of contour, which is much kinder to the gingival tissue. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.